Hey there. Hey. Hi, Kara. Good to see you. Good to see you. <laughs> this has been fun. I, I'm finally glad we get to connect. Yeah, so um, tell everybody a little bit about who you are. Sure. I started working for CNN actually 16 years ago, and I've worked in, you know, local news uh, my whole entire career. And uh, I think when I, my goal was always to obviously make it to the network. And so when I got to CNN, uh, I was pretty jazzed because that's the, the cream of the crop when you, when you think about our business. And so I lived all over the place. I lived in small towns in Texas and Wisconsin and Louisiana and California. And so you got to, you know, you got to work really hard to, to make it to, to, to this spot. And of course that means family, love, children, relationships, um, that gets sacrificed along the way. It's really hard to find that balance of uh, creating a family and also pursuing a successful career in journalism. Yeah, I'm sure that's hard to mix both career and family. So tell us a little bit about your journey. Did you um, date? Was it tough? I mean, you lived in lots of different places. So, I mean, I know you're married, but how did that happen? <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like the whole love them and leave them, right? You have like, usually you're in one market for about a year. And um, so you always kind of let them know, hey, here's the deal. I really enjoy spending time with you, but bye-bye. <laughs> Doesn't that sound so cold? That sounds uh, terrible now. Or it could be great. I don't know. Until you're <laughs> like, then you've had too much. Yeah, exactly. No, it, on, on a serious note, I, I always knew I wanted to succeed in this business. And um, at the same time, I also knew I wanted to find love, but it just wasn't a priority. But I, I loved meeting different people and dating and um, you know, made a lot of mistakes along the way. And uh, it wasn't until um, I went to war and I came back, this is when I was working for CNN, that my house had flooded and I lost everything and I was turning 40 and I was going through a divorce. I eventually did marry, by the way. I married in my, uh, gosh, how old was I? I guess I was 30. And I rushed it because I was thinking, okay, I have this great job. Now I got to get married. Now I got to have a family. And um, my biggest piece of advice is never do that. Never rush and never hurry uh, into into a marriage. Biggest mistake you could ever make. So um, I was going through a terrible divorce and I came back from war and my house had flooded and I lost everything. So I remember sitting on the front uh, porch thinking, oh my gosh, I'm 40. I have no kids. I have... Uh, no marriage. I've lost everything in my house. <laughs> what am I going to do? That's like and, the epitome, epitome of starting over, right? I oh mean, my everything. gosh. Totally and completely. And I knew I still wanted to have it all. I, 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 I just, oh, deep in my heart, I had to figure out a way that I was going to have that balance. And then that's how I started going through fertility because I thought, okay, I'll be a single parent. I've got a great job. Um, I don't have a, a love in my life, but I'm going to do it on my own. Uh, but obviously during that process, I met my husband now and he was very open to having a fam family, thank goodness. So now I'm an older mom with a great job and a great family. So what the heck? You can have it all. You can. And I know you wrote <laughs> the whole uh, fertility plan, which is a great book. Thank you. Um, did some of your journey go into writing this book? Is that kind of what oh, inspired you to do that? Very much so. I mean, my, my husband kept saying to me, you've got to write a book. You've got to write a book. And, and I thought, if there's anything I can do to give younger women and older women uh, a bit of advice that you can still have it all, um, then you know it was worth it. It was worth it. So I tell my story. Uh, you know, short and sweet. It's not the whole book. It's it's just the very beginning of the book. But the I, concept, the idea was, no matter what you what your age is as a woman, whether you're a, a young girl who's just learning about her body and sex and and um, figuring out, you know, how you're going to live your life, what you're going to eat, what kind of makeup you're going to wear, uh, what kind of environment you're going to live in, because all of that for, impacts your fertility. Sure. All of that, yeah. you know, and um, to kind of the woman 
in their 30s who's thinking, wow, I'm doing great in my career, but I really don't have something special in my life. Well, that's when I'm going to push freezing your eggs. Don't rush into a marriage to the first charming person who comes along. Freeze your eggs and don't rush it. Then you can have a baby later in life. All the way up to somebody who's my age, um, thank goodness you still have uh, opportunities now to get pregnant, whether it's um, through IVF or an egg donor or a surrogate or even adoption. There are beautiful options for all women at all ages now. And that's what the book is about, kind of how to live your life to preserve your eggs. And at the same time, what can you do if maybe your egg count isn't so great or even if you're out of eggs, you can still have a family. That's right. Yeah, no, it's good because family comes in lots of different um, shapes and forms these days. It's not a one size fits all. Exactly. Uh, can we dive a little bit into the specifics of your fertility journey? Um, so you were going to the fertility clinic yourself thinking you were going to be a single mom and then you met John. Right. <laughs> it's actually kind of funny. I called up my best friend who is gay and I said, hey, can I have your sperm? <laughs> Because I didn't want to go through a sperm bank. I really wanted to know the donor. And he said, yeah, absolutely. Let's go for it. So we went through the whole process of that. And I Did love to Did he have to wait the six-month um, yes. quarantine yes. process? Okay. Oh, yes. They had to make sure that, you know, they had to check for infectious diseases and all yeah. of that. And uh, make sure that the, uh, the sperm was healthy. And um, the, the funny story that I love to tell is we go to the fertility clinic and of course he has to donate his sample. Well, we know how that has to happen. So he goes into the room and it's, you know, nicely lit and uh, a nice comfortable chair and they give him his little cup and the whole deal. And he comes out afterwards and he's just devastated. Like he looks like he, he's been hit by a truck. And I, I said, Matt, what's wrong? Yeah. He said, Kira, I'm gay. And all they had in there was female porn it. and female naked magazines. It was awful. It was awful. So he, <laughs> he had a hard time. Uh, let's say he had a hard time. I said, so what did you do? He said, well, I just... I put on my music and I went into my zone. <laughs> and I said, A lot well, of people pull out their phones. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I said, I appreciate you and your patience. I love you, Matt. Next time we'll so, just have to bring your own material. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Bring B Y O S. Bring your own sperm. That's right. <laughs> well, I hear a lot of stories about the collection rooms not being yes. super awesome. Maybe the clinics need to revamp those. Yes, exactly. They need to make it conducive for gay and straight. That's right. <laughs> Whatever sexuality they are. <laughs> I should have added that in my book. I'm going to have to write another one and add a chapter. <laughs> <laughs> so did you end up creating embryos with your friend or? No, actually, within that process, I ended up going back to Iraq again and, uh, and then came back another time and then... Uh, that is when I met my husband. So everything had kind of been put on ice, shall we say. Uh, so he never went completely through it. So needless to say, Matt was pretty bummed out um, yeah. that I didn't go through it uh, were you with planning him. To co-parent together? Yeah, we actually were. We talked about that. That's he, awesome. he said he would he'd want to be involved in the kids' lives, and he's got great parents too. Of course, they were very excited about the whole process. So yes, we were gonna we were gonna co-parent and now I didn't expect anything from him financially or sure. a specific amount of time it was going to be completely up to him I knew that I was taking on this adventure pretty much solo with whatever role he wanted to play and I was fine with that yeah no, that seems like a really nice combo um, I've looked into co-parenting but it's uh, yeah it's tricky how involved somebody really wants to be and if you have the same guidelines on how you want the kids to be raised or you know, later exactly. down the line, you could change your mind. I mean, 18 years is a long time. It's not yes, a, yes, a short-term so commitment. So, <laughs> so then you uh, love sparked, and you got married, and and John was open to the idea of becoming a dad yes. with you or parent and with you. And being older parents, um, you know, we had to go through through IVF, and, right. and that was fine. And it actually, it was, you know, a, here's another thing, too, is that a lot of women and even men are ashamed of the IVF process. And um, they, 
they don't want to talk about it and they feel like it's somehow a failure and they want to keep it a secret and uh, women a lot of times tell me they're nervous and scared and and don't want to do the shots and um, well, it's not really romantic you know I mean it's not no, like <laughs> it's it's not however however I will say that John and I made it fun I mean we got excited about it we embraced it um, you know, of course, he loved giving me a shot and, uh, um, you know, anything to, to torture me. Right. Um, so, you know, we shared those duties and um, we, we just made it a part of our life in a fun way, not so much a, a duty. Stressful. Yes, exactly. So I think it's how you look at it and how you embrace it. And it actually can be a wonderful bonding time between you and your partner in life. Yeah. And then um, did you implant one embryo, two embryos or five, five at one time? Yes. Yes. Because I didn't have um, I didn't have really good, fabulous embryos. So I only had five pretty good ones, one really good one. And so the fact that two of the five took was pretty remarkable. I mean, my doc yeah, my doctor didn't even think that, that two would take. Actually, three took, and we lost the triplet. Um, oh. But that's expected. It was it was tough, and it was hard, but it's also expected. It was pretty expected. early on, I'm assuming. Very early on, yeah. right away. Yeah, right away, because when, when, as you know, you hear the heartbeats, the doctor's able to tell you immediately if it's healthy or not healthy. Mm -hmm. And the third one was barely beating, yeah. and the... Yeah, you could just tell it was it was um, deformed in many ways. It wasn't a, a solid looking embryo. Right, right. And uh, how was that journey? I mean, it's literally your first time being pregnant and you're pregnant with twins and you went through this crazy <laughs> IVF journey. Like what was going oh, yes. through your head? Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, indigestion, um, aching back. Um, let's see what else. Sounds very, like very pregnant. tired. Sounds like you're yes. totally pregnant. <laughs> um, I couldn't eat anything for the longest time. I had horrible morning sickness for, gosh, about seven months. So that was no fun at all. Oh. So I, I actually took Zofran, um, and that, that's what helps chemo patients, um, no kidding. from, from throwing up. Yes. And the doctor said there, there shows to be no, no side effects, no impact on the babies. And so, um, I did that and that helped a lot. Nothing really tasted great throughout the whole pregnancy, mm -hmm. but at least it, I was able to eat. Now the good side of things, I was very healthy. Um, I didn't drink any alcohol. I only did a very, very light coffee one, um, in the morning cause I was doing a morning show then and I needed something to spark my energy. Um, but other than that, I just ate very, very healthy since nothing tasted good anyway. Why waste, uh, why waste, yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. So I just ate, ate really well. It was great. Were you nervous at all going through the, the pregnancy process, like each trimester because you're carrying twins, they have a higher rate of, you know, coming early and being um, premature? Absolutely, absolutely. And that, um, I also had to see a high risk um, gynecologist in, a, in addition to my regular gynecologist. So I was seeing, having to see two doctors and that was because of twins, my age. So every time I went in to see the babies, I was always, you know, very nice. nervous and concerned, yeah, mm -hmm. about their health and, and, um, and how they were doing. But I did everything by the book. I mean, I was, I was over... No, 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 wow. no. Actually, it's kind of a funny story. Um, you know, we were getting kind of close and they were, they were premature. They were, um, I want to say about five, three, four, four weeks early, I think. Um, and I, I remember coming home from work and I was sitting in the, the chair and I was feeling kind of, you know, I had to pee a lot that day and I thought, <laughs> wow, you know, they're really getting heavy. It's really, it's time to, it's time to get these babies out of here. I could barely breathe. And then oh. I remember, I remember my dad going out to throw some, some food on the barbecue and I really had to go. So I went to the bathroom. I went, oh, phew, I almost, you know, peed myself and I sat back down. Still I wet. still needed to go. I was like, what is going on? Did I just pee myself? I just went to the bathroom. And then I thought, uh oh. So I went back into the bathroom again. And then, you know, the, you've got to laugh at all this stuff, right? You can't take it too seriously. So I yell for my husband. 
I need you to come in here. I need you to see if I'm peeing or if my water broke because I was too afraid to get up. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> so he came in and it was hysterical. I'm like, look, look, look down there. And he gets, you know, he gets his head down there and he's looking. He went, oh no, that's your water. Your water broke. It's time. It's so. Time. Yeah, and it was funny. My mom was like, we got to go. We got to go. And I said, Mom, I still need to get into the shower. I need to wash my hair. I mean, this is unexpected. I know. I was like playing it all calm. You were. You're like, oh, I have at least 12 hours. <laughs> yes, yes. So, um, and then, of course, the rest is, is history. But I will tell you, you know, with the twins, breathing was really, really hard. And so um, I was reaching a point where I was actually kind of getting anxiety attacks because oh. I felt like I couldn't breathe. So when I got to the hospital, um, I said to him, I said, you know, I'm not going to be able to, to lie down if I need to lie down. He goes, well, then I'm going to have to put you out and then you're going to miss everything. And I said, no, I can't miss everything. Yeah. So nobody told me that once you have an epidural, you're high as a kite. So as soon as they gave me the epidural, I mean, I was in you good You were cracking shape. jokes oh, and super funny. I was, mm, yeah, I was like, let's go. I'm ready. I, <laughs> I mean, you're breathe. funny already, but I can't imagine <laughs> you on an epidural. So how is motherhood? Like, now you're in this new chapter, finding mm. this new balance. Was it everything you dreamed? Definitely. I... Um, the only transition has been, you know, with work. I mean, getting used to um, not being in the daily mix every single day. It took me a while to sort of accept that that wasn't going to happen. But then every time I pick up my kids or every time they come crawl into bed with me or every time I take them to a little league game or to a, um, a dance recital, I just think, Oh, you had a boy it, and a girl? Or? A boy and a girl. And yes. how old are they today? Six. Six. My goodness. So mm. you did this back in 2011? Uh, yes. So I had them at the age of 42. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. What a miracle. So it, yeah, I, I feel I feel very lucky and, and, and very blessed. And, and so, and I think it's good for me. I think my whole life was my job. And so finding this balance shows me what really is truly important. And, you know, they'll be around, I hope, <laughs> loving me forever um, until the day I die. Whereas your job, you know, you never know when it comes and goes. And so um, I love my work. I would never sacrifice my work ethic in any way. But um, it, it's being it's a, a mom is kind of like a new job title. Yes, very much so. Very much so. Yeah. Well, yeah, I guess I'm have, working double. <laughs> yeah, you're working double for sure. Do you have any like key advice that you would give somebody each stage of their life? Like, so the career woman that's gone ho and then what advice mm. would you give somebody that's right at that fertility stage that feels like they're ready to be into motherhood? And then what would you tell the mom who is doing this every day? Wow, that is, that's such a great question. First of all, I would tell all of them. Um, that having kids and having a family is worth everything, 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 everything. I cannot imagine my life um, without these children and without a family. When you have a great um, partner in life and it just makes it all that much better. Like I can't wait to just spend time with the family. Oh, there were, you know, there, there used to be, uh, you know, there were always, there was always that time where, oh, I can't wait to go out for dinner. Or I can't wait to go get drinks with friends. I can't wait to go out with coworkers. I can't wait to take away for, take out for a weekend. Now it truly is about, boy, I want to do that with my kids. Oh. I want to do all of that with my kids. Mm -hmm. So it changes your perspective. So for the younger, the younger gal, start thinking about your fertility now. Think about um, what you're eating, what you're drinking, what you're smoking, what you're breathing. I mean, seriously. I mean, young girls don't think about this. They smoke cigarettes. They smoke oh, pot. Yeah, they drink a lot of alcohol. They, um, yep. you know, they They're not they taking stay. care of themselves health-wise. Right, premarital, I mean, uh, unprotected premarital sex. Oh. I mean, S STDs are no joke. I just did a blog about that. I mean, it okay. really affects your fertility. If you yes. get any of these major STDs, it could give you unexplained infertility. Absolutely, absolutely. So that's why I really want to encourage young 
gals. I'm not saying don't have sex. I'm right. saying you need to be careful and you need to protect your body. It all, mm -hmm. you know, impacts your fertility. So someone in the midst of a great career and just not ready yet, freeze your eggs, freeze your eggs, freeze your eggs, freeze your eggs. That's like a broken record. <laughs> freeze your eggs. Freeze your eggs. <laughs> freeze your eggs. Hey, if you're thinking about it, freeze your eggs. <laughs> and if you're not thinking about it, freeze, freeze your, your eggs. eggs. <laughs> That's awesome. And uh, if you're somebody in uh, like me in my ripe old age, um, you can still do it. You can still go through IVF. You can still, whether it's your eggs or a donor's eggs or a surrogate with your eggs or a donor's eggs or donor sperm or whatever it is. Um, there are creative ways and, um, you can, you can have a family. Exactly. And don't forget adoption. I have some incredible or even embryo adoption. Yeah. No oh, one talks about that. Yes, actually, that's a really great point. And I wish I would have talked more about that in my book. That is becoming, um, more of a talker and popular. You're right. People are making embryos just so people that don't have any way to do that can have a baby. Yeah. It's wonderful. It is wonderful. And then yes. to the mom, to the working mom. What oh, would you tell my her? <laughs> Hang in there. <laughs> to the working mom, you can do it. You can do it. You can you can have your job and you can also have a family and you just have to be thoughtful about it and plan it out properly and um, you can make it work. Yeah. I think that they're doing a better job than they think they are. And if you, if you want to work and you want to be a mom, it's okay. Don't feel guilty about it because you want to be a role model to your kids. Um, you, you want them to know that it's okay to not work and it's also great to work. Um, and also I think it's a great mental release for, to be a working mom. I think sometimes you just need a break and believe it or not, working is a break from your kids when you're about to go crazy. Mm -hmm. So, um, so, so I, you know, I guess my biggest message would be don't feel guilty whether you want to work or not work. Both are a really great option. It's the quality of the time that you give your kids, not the quantity. I'm convinced because I've met a lot of kids who have a mom or a dad that doesn't work. And you know what? They're not necessarily the most well-adjusted kids. Mm -hmm. So it is the quality, mm -hmm. not the quantity. That's just my opinion. Mm -hmm. That's some great advice. Well, it has <laughs> been so much fun getting to know you, hearing a little bit about your story. Obviously, everyone can go pick up the book and even read about you a little bit more. But, um, but thank you, Valerie. No, thank you for just telling, being so open and helping spread this message because it's really important. And, I agree. Uh, allowing women to learn about their fertility sooner because they don't teach it in school. And it's, um, it's definitely something that uh, I feel like as women, we empower each other when we do talk about it. So I agree. Thanks I agree. so much for your time today. We will keep up with you and follow you on your journey. And we can always watch you on CNN. That's right. You got it. <laughs> All right. Bye now. Thanks, Valerie. Bye-bye. Take care.